Hello, hello friends, Dapper Drabby here, and we're going to look at what I call a Venusaur spread deck today. Now the main part of this deck is, of course, Venusaur here, with its Jungle Totem ability. Each grass energy, each basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides two grass energy. You can't apply more than one Jungle Totem ability at a time. Now you don't need to though. Any basic grass energy equals two grass energy. So, Venusaur itself can attack with two grass energy as long as the ability is not shut off. So, two grass energy for 90 damage is pretty good. But we're primarily not attacking with Venusaur. Now, the re what makes this a spread deck? We are starting things off with the Necrozma GX. Black Ray GX. When our opponents have GX... Uh, Pokemon on their side of the field, we are going to Black Ray them, get them down to low HP pretty quickly. Uh, we got one Rainbow and one uh, Promo, one, because that's all, all we got for Necrozmas. Uh, furthermore, more spread damage, of course, we have the Promo Tapu Koko. This is basically a Promo deck, trust me on that. Uh... Tapu Koko, of course, does a flying flip, 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, what I love about this is, like, I don't, I can only, uh, I can attach a double colorless energy or grass energy with Tapu Koko when Venusaur is out, which is what I love. Like, it's so easy to power up these guys, you know, it's, it's two grass energies for Necrozma, it's one grass energy for Tapu Koko. Um, of course, we have three Lele's for consistency. Uh, I don't ne don't find it necessary to have three Lele's in this deck, but it is nice. Uh, I'd say if you're going to try a budget version, go with uh, Octillery, because uh, Zoroark is too expensive too. Uh, I'd say Zoroark or Octillery, but Zoroark is way too expensive. But Octillery would work fine in this deck, I think. Um, that or like just you need to draw. A draw consistency here in these three slots so i mean you could even i i play a low count of sycamore you could even up the count of sycamore to replace the leleys but i found leleys very useful you know to get the, the turn one bridget which everyone wants but if you can't get the turn one bridget go ahead you're gonna have them to be able to grab the guzmas when you need them skylas when you need them so you really need that floatstone you tapu lele skyla floatstone or what i had to do before was tapu lele Skyla, Nest Ball, Bulbasaur. I've done that before. Because you want Bulbasaur up your first turn. So you can get Venusaur as quickly as possible. Now for Venusaur, we're playing a 3-1-2 a line here. Uh, and I think that works just fine. To be able to, you want to get your Venusaurs out pretty quickly. I mean, it doesn't help that I only have two Venusaurs. So I could only play two Venusaurs. But it works pretty well. Uh, Ivysaur is only necessary if you're like stuck in a turn. You can't find any rare candies. Uh, and then, one of my favorite techs in this deck right here, Shining Arceus. That ultimate arrow is so good. With Venusaur up, you can attach two grass energies to Shining Arceus and attack and do 30 damage across your opponent's board. It is beautiful. And Fable Defense we don't really use, but it could be useful. As long as Pokemon your active Pokemon prevent all damage done to your bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. Um, that's good if you're facing up against a, a fellow Coco and uh, fellow Arceus even probably. Uh, but that's what makes Shining Arceus good. Uh, and then a few more tech cards. We got Rayquaza, Rayquaza uh, Turbo Storm. You can attach a Grass Energy and get two basic Grass Energies to perfectly set up any one of your Pokemon. Uh, so I like Rayquaza in this deck. Uh, a Rangaroo, we can't, we, we struggle a little bit with, uh, getting, after we get out that Venusaur, it, we, we don't have a lot of draw supporters, so we struggle a little bit to keep things going without that extra draw support. So having at least one a Rangaroo to keep your hand to three, it really helps to be able to try to sift through your deck to try to find the cards you need. And also, a Rengaru can attack for two Grass Energies when Venusaur is on board. And then we have just a single tech of a Meowth uh, for that last last KO, Turmoil Strike. This tech does 50 damage to one of your opponents that has any damage counters on it. Now, all your opponent's Pokemon should have damage counters on it. So, Meowth is good when you're, uh, you have like two prizes left, and there's a Lele that has 120 damage on it. You throw down Meowth. Uh, throw a grass energy on it, get it into the active, and then hit that Lele to get that last two prizes. 
Uh, that's what Meowth is here for. Uh, I think that's all the Pokemon. I kind of went in a backwards order. Because uh, that's what they were in. It was preferred to go that order, I guess. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll go on to the items. We're playing one Field Blower. I prefer to play two, but space is limited when you have a stage two and a bunch of smaller cards. So there's uh, one Field Blower so we can keep our ability in case Garbodor shows up. Uh, it's primarily the reason for a Field Blower in this deck. You're not really... Uh, getting rid of tools as much you're getting rid of float stones but you're not really getting rid of uh choice bands necessarily because you're not you only have necrozma and uh lele which you want to keep off the board for the for the most part you want to make them take uh you want to make them take out both your cocos a venusaur a Ranguru. you want to take them make them take out the single prize attackers um more so than the double prize necrozma is there for the gx attack only which is why we play two we're only going to be playing one down on the field we have two Heavy Balls. Heavy Balls just great to be able to get uh, Venusaur out. Uh, I did have a Shining uh, Volc Volcarona in here before, and it was good to get him out too. But <laughs> I was able to find Shining Arceus instead and, and swap them out. Uh, I like that a little bit better. If you are worried about the fire matchup, put Shining Volcanion in, because uh, that too can attack for two Grass Energies for its second attack is not bad uh we got two max elixirs uh yes i prefer more but i only play 10 grass energy so two max elixirs is just good enough to get you know shining arceus up and on board and get that secondary attacker ready to to start swinging uh we got one nest ball which is just primarily you want to get out that uh a rangaroo and bulbasaur those guys you want out first turn or as soon as possible so nest ball helps you get those out when you can't f um get anything else or if bridget's prize or something uh then we have four uh rare candies i have a couple different art forms of it of course this one's everyone's favorite right um actually i don't know oh these two are the same though uh but there there are other arts of, of rare candy which is kind of cool it's like this one's i like a lot i think that one's cool. Rare candies, you know. Uh, where we were, rare candy. We got one rescue stretcher. Uh, just to be able to pull out something from the discard. Say you lose one of your tech cards like Meowth or Orangaroo early. You can rescue stretcher it, pull it back out. Uh, it also works if you like have to toss a Venusaur. We only play two. So if you have to toss a Venusaur, you can rescue stretcher that Venusaur back into your hand. So you can evolve your Bulbasaur. That's useful as well. Uh, four Ultra Balls, pretty standard in every deck. We got uh, one Bridget. Yes, two is preferable for most people. Um, I try to get away with playing one. And I, 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 it was, I did originally have it as two, but I wanted to boost damage a little bit, so I threw a couple of Fighting Fury Belts in because I want to make Shining Arceus into a tank. Uh, so I knocked down uh, to one Bridget, which may or may not have been a mistake. We got two Guzmas. Of course, three is preferable, but... Uh, we're not really trapping anybody. We're, we're using Guzma to trap, actually, instead of uh, pull out something to knock out. We're using Guzma to trap. We want to trap something in the active that the opponent doesn't want in the active so that we can keep spreading damage and they can't attack us back. Uh, we are playing four in, highest count possible, so that we can uh, keep the card flowing. We have two Sycamores. I know, low count, right? Because uh, we don't really want to discard a lot of our stuff. We want to keep it in our deck if we can. Because we use almost every card. Uh, two Skylas to search out those float stones. Those nest balls. Like I told you, Skylas is very useful to get those item cards that you need at the, any given time. And we're playing two of her. We have two Fighting Fury Belts. Again, just to make uh, Shining Arceus into a tank. Uh, Necrozma could use the 220 HP as well, probably. But, uh... That's so why we play two of them. We're probably only going to play one of them down. But uh, I ended up replacing a Hala and a, uh, a Bridget to put these two in. So we'll see if that was a mistake or not. Uh, and then, of course, we ended out with two Float Stones. Again, more Float Stones. Always preferable. But you can only have 60 cards in a deck. We have, I believe it's 3 DCE and 10 Grass Energy for uh, a total of 13 Energies. Yeah, 3 DCE. So there is the deck. I'm going to export it right here. Uh, I don't know if I have to have it like this. Export. To the clipboard so we can post it onto the um, description 
of the video. So if you guys want to check us out or use it as a template to tweak, to make better, to make it your own, feel free. Copy it from down in the description uh, above everything else. But let's go ahead and see what Venusaur Necrozma Tapu Koko Shining RCS can do. I know, that's a big word. Um, yeah, it's already saved. I didn't change anything, right? Yeah, I didn't change anything. Okay. So we're playing Venusaur Necrozma. If you guys think of a cool name for that, like, uh, Black Ray Totem or something, I don't know. Let me know that down in the comment section if you guys have a better name for this than uh, Venusaur Necrozma. Um, uh, or Venusaur Spread, I don't know, like, Spreading the Dinosaurs Thin... Something. There, there has to be a better name for it than Venusaur Necrozma. Or you can do hashtag Venusaur Necrozma, right? Hashtag. Like, there you go, Dan. Do you hashtag the, the, the name that the deck should be named? Because, actually, I like this a lot. Venusaur makes it... Makes spread decks, like, very easy to charge up. Which I like a lot. Do I want to go first? Um, yes, I need to get Venusaur down. So, of course, I have the golden the golden Venusaur sleeves from the Generations box as well. Because they fit this deck so much. Okay, so what do we want to start with? We're going to probably start with the Coco. And actually, we're, like, set up turn two already. Like, pass turn two, please. Okay, so we have the Bulbasaur, we have the Ultra Ball, the Rare Candy. We actually have everything we need. I don't need to go get the Lele. Lele's unnecessary. And we're facing Garbodor, of course, so we're going to save our Field Blower as well. Let's just put an Energy on Coco and pass the turn. That way our opponent thinks we have nothing. They, don't, they will not want to end. They're going to want to Bridget, uh, Sycamore, something to that effect. <clears throat> Let's see what we get. Throwing down rainbows. This is probably Garbodor Glissopod. This has got to be Garbodor Glissopod. So it's going to take them a moment to get some GXs on the field. But I'm sure it's confusing them. me starting out with uh, Coco and Bulbasaur. Bulba. Bulba Coco? I don't know. Bulba Coco? I don't know. Bulba Krasma. Yep, they're starting with that Bridget. Perfect for us. Um, I mean, we're going to end up giving him cards because we're probably going to end. But uh, this should be fine. We're probably going to... Uh, I might max Elixir before I uh, search out the Venusaur. Galissapod, Trubbish, Galissapod. Or not, I mean, Wimpod. Wimpod, Trubbish, Wimpod. Now, using the Scamper Away one, rather than this, the Free Retreat one. I wonder why. Ooh, there's a Fighting Fury belt. I think we're going to toss you the belt. Max Elixir onto the Bulbathor. Uh, Ultra Ball. Away the Stretcher and the belt. And grabbing that Venusaur. We're going to Rare Candy into Venusaur, of course. So Coco can attack. And end. To end the turn. Now we're rolling. Uh, what do we want to get rid of here? Because we can Ultra Ball for that uh, a Rangaroo. And look, Venusaur can attack. Let's go ahead and Ultra Ball. Get rid of that Bridget. And, uh... Oh, I could have just Bridged it, actually. Retreat, retreat. No, 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 I don't want to do that. Uh... I don't want to, but I guess I'm going to throw away the Guzma. We want to get out that Orangaroo. Keep this a, a single prize game. Now we can throw that Float Stone on the Venusaur and instruct for two cards. It's another Bulbasaur. In case our first one goes down. But let's go ahead and Flying Flip. Spread some damage. I could have retreated and actually took an out this Trubbish right away. But then getting Venusaur out of the active is a lot more difficult. 
Throwing a choice band on the trubs. The float stone on the galissapod. I think that was backwards. I feel like that they did that backwards. They should have put the float on the trouble. On the trouble. On the trubbish and the uh the f the float. Alright, yeah, the float on the Trubbish and the Choice Band on the Wimpod. I think they did that backwards. Yeah, see? <laughs> Which is also why I didn't worry about that. Okay, so I'm not going to give you more cards, but I want more cards. Let's see what we get. We get a Fighting Fury Belt. We get the uh, Ultra Ball. Let's see, if I want to Ultra Ball, what would I want to Ultra Ball here? I feel like it's time to get out that Necrozma before Galissapod shows. Uh, but what to get rid of here? I want to keep the belt here. I think I'm going to get rid of the Grass Energy, actually. Ugh, that's hard. That's hard to get rid of. But we'll get rid of it. Uh, and we will grab the shiny... Ooh, actually, do I want to do this one? I want to do Shining Arceus, guys. I really do. So we're going to Shining Arceus up here. Uh, Necrozma. Still not needed quite yet. But uh, Shining Arceus is just so too much fun to get rid of, right? And we get a Lele. Um, I think... Yeah, let's Flying Flip one more turn. And I think Arceus will be able to take quite a few knockouts next turn. Unless uh, my opponent evolves this turn. They need four evolutions this turn to not lose all their basics. There's another one. Okay. Choice Band on that one. And Glissopod. Another Lele. Okay, there's there's two targets for Necrozma, by the way. Two Necrozma targets. To an N. Does that hurt me? It does not hurt me, because I have not taken any prizes yet, so. I've not taken any prizes yet. So we're going to get a full six cards here, which we should at least have a Grass Energy in. We don't, but we have a Max Elixir, so hopefully we can hit that Grass Energy. There's a Galissapod. There's our three targets. But, uh, we don't need three targets. We only, only need one, don't we? A hundred damage didn't even knock it out. Oh, but they forfeit because they knew what was coming. Okay, so... I don't know if we would have won that. It's hard to tell. Because they forfeited. And because we have the time, we're going to do another game. This sucks. That took a long time, too. But look at that. Coco... Putting on that pressure, 200 damage. But we what we were going to do there was... We had the Max Elixir. We were going to search for an energy. Try to get it on Arceus. Switch into Arceus. Do 30 damage across the board. Knocking out Trubbish, Trubbish, and Wimpod. Putting more damage on Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko and Galissapod. And then we were going to start searching for our... Um, Necrozma and a couple more energies to be able to knock out the Galissapod. I think we had that one in the bag. It's hard to say. No one took any prize cards. But uh, I like the power of this deck. Um, it, it's unexpected for people because it, it builds up. And I mean, once you get Arceus going, more people know about Arceus with uh, Venusaur. It's, it's, it's going to be a thing. Uh, so let's play another match here. Ooh, looks like we found it right away. We're already 20 minutes in, though. And we're on a win streak of three with this, uh, not... I don't think it's specifically this deck. I'm also playing around with Venusaur with more RCSs because it's just more fun. I'm trying to make a, an all, uh... What is it? All, uh... Base... Not all basic. All non-GX attackers uh, Venusaur deck because... Why not? It's going to take them... They're going to take out six Pokemon. Um, I know I have one that has, like, only two Lele's in it. Which can easily be replaced with, uh... Octillery. 
I mean, they're not equivalent. Let me get that straight with you. They're not equivalent, but they do they do play similar roles. So let's go ahead. Uh, this one we're going to have to start with that Lele for that Bridget that luckily was not prized. Yeah, only, only thing I need down first turn is this guy right here. It's the Bulbathor action. We already got our Rengaru on the board. So we might be able to just grab a Necrozma here. What are we facing? More trouble. More trouble. We don't want Necrozma yet. Then we want some Coco. Um, Meowth might be able to do some big damage here too. So we'll go with that. I'm going to finish off with this. Start with the DCE, yeah, and in turn. A Bridget, they start that turn one Bridget, we had to search for it. What do they get? Coco and Glissopod. Why am I facing Garbodor Glissopod constantly right now? So this deck can beat Garbodor or Galissapod, guys. I don't know about anything else. <laughs> no, it can beat other things, too. What do we want to do here? This is tight, because I feel like we want a Ultra Ball. A Way of Guzma. And a Grass Energy. Pull out Venusaur. Yeah, we would have evolved into that. But then I still feel like we need an energy. So I'm going to pull out this uh, Wind Pod. I'll put Coco out. Instruct for three here. And hope we get an energy so that we can attack. The question is who to attack with because we want to do 60 damage here. And I don't think I can do 60 damage with anybody. I can do 50 with uh, Meowth. Or I can do 60 damage with Oranguru, actually. So the best choice here is to retreat back into Oranguru. Put that Fighting Fury Belt on him so he's not knocked out in one turn. And Psychic for 60, taking out Glissopod. Or not Glissopod, taking out the Wimpod before he becomes a Glissopod. Got a quick prize. Ranger is good for those quick prizes first thing. Got the energy on the other Wimpod. With the choice band. Wonder Tag? Sycamore? Probably. It's probably a Sycamore. I don't know. Yep. Sycamore. Which we're going to end next turn, so we'll give them a fresh hand. Now let me know if that was a mistake to not just spread flying flips right now. But I think we're safe. I don't think it was a, a problem just yet. Now it is. Now we need to find that uh, Fury Belt right now. Renger is the only one that can attack. We need to get a DC on Coco. Get some damage onto that Garbodor so it's easier to hit. N, another N. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to end. Give them a fresh hand. That's all we have. Oof. Get a bunch of useless cards right now. Let's go ahead and start piling up uh, energy on Rayquaza, I think. Is that the right choice? Use that our Coco. Now nah, we gotta start spreading. We gotta start spreading damage. So let's go ahead and Psychic for 70 damage. Oranger is gonna be up here for a while until they get that Galissapod out. This is where, once Oranger goes down, it's best to go uh, search for Necrozma. There's that first impression. It's gonna come and hit Oranger with some big numbers right now. A 
luckily we are out of range of being knocked out. Oh, an N. That helps me. I had an idea for what to do with the Ultra Ball Lele, but N gives me 5 cards instead of 4, so I'm not going to complain about that. Okay, good. We can power up the Rayquaza or Tapu Koko, whichever one works better right here. Uh, let's see, Glissopod's out now. Has 10 damage on it, so it needs to be have 200 more damage on it. 100 damage to the Rangaroo, which I'm not mad about. <laughs> let's see, who do we want to... Tapu Koko or Rayquaza, who wants the energy? I think I'm going to give the grass... Uh, I'm going to give the energy to Rayquaza in case we can get that ability back. Um, plus we can we can pull out those uh, grass energies out of the discard easier. I don't think we can heavy ball for anything right now. Let's just Sycamore and see what finds out, what comes out. With the rescue stretcher, we get the Necrozma. That's good. Necrozma is good. Uh, Ultra Ball, so we don't have to Ultra Ball for the Necrozma, it's just ready to go once we get it down. We still did not pull the Field Blower, but we can grab a Skyla for the Field Blower next turn. So right now, I think I'm just going to Psychic to get some damage on this Galissapod. Yes, 110 damage, so one Necrozma Black Ray can take out the Galissapod, uh, which is good. Except he's going to Acerola and uh, show us what's what, I guess. That works. I mean, I would have done the same with my Galissapod deck. I would have acerola would right there. Pulling out the other Galissapod. First impression, making that damage point mute. Okay, so the question here is to uh, Rayquaza. Yeah, I'm going to Rayquaza. We'll give them an extra prize card, but we're going to go ahead and Rayquaza. We're going to get uh, two energies down on Necrozma here. And we're going to make it where, where Meowth can take out that... Uh, can take out the Coco. Now, I don't quite need the Skyla, but I, don't, oh, I do want to end, actually. I want to end him down to 5 before anything else happens. And we'll keep that Rescue Stretcher so we can get a Rangaroo later. Um, I mean, all the cards I had were useful. <clears throat> but lowering the hand size of my opponent is always a good thing. Floatstone, Heavy Ball, both useless. See, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and Turbo Storm, though. 50 more damage, get those two energies onto Necrozma. So Venusaur is just like Guzma Bait right now. Ooh, who's actually Guzma Bait? Is it Necrozma? Yeah, it's Necrozma. That doesn't scare me though. You're only going to be able to do first impression at 120. That doesn't scare me. Lele. Uh, I wish I could Lele for the... But we're just going to go ahead and throw down this and Black Ray. Now this Galissapod has to be that right there, Acerola. Yep. This guy must play four of those. Ace of Roll is really the anti-spread damage deck. Or anti-spread damage dot deck, I guess I should say. Because you're going to see the, the... The thing at the end of it saying who did more damage. And it's going to say that I did a lot more damage. But got screwed. <laughs> Okay, the question here is... I guess I'm gonna Rayquaza. Nah, wait. How much damage does Lele have? Lele has 70 left. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put up the Tapu Koko now. We'll put up Rayquaza in the next turn. We get the Skyla for the. What do we need that field? We needed the field blower to get off the Garbodor. That's right. So I didn't need to throw that energy down. Darn it! It's a waste of energy. Let's hang on to it for now. Well, I could Skyla for an actual supporter next turn. Is there anything I need right now? I don't think there's anything I need right now. My Shining Arceus is, is buried in the prizes, so that doesn't help me either. I guess I need a Rescue Stretcher here. But I'd probably just pull out a uh, Rangaroo. Which I don't necessarily want to do it. Flying Flip! Oh, did he use impression thing? So he wasn't able to. He used his secondary attack, so he wasn't. He didn't take any damage from Coco this turn. I might have to rely on Venusaur to take this. Wait, oh, he uses a secondary attack, got it. And then he's gonna switch his Glissopod into Coco. How'd Coco heal a little bit? Oh, he only has 20 damage left. Only has 20 damage left. Let's go ahead and put up uh, Meowth, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna attack with Meowth. Ultra Ball. What does Ultra Ball get me right now? I don't think I have anything left in the deck I really want to grab. Let's check this. I think I'm just gonna grab a Rangaroo and put him in my hand. I can't seem to find a field blower. I know it's in there though. Do I Ultra Ball? No. I'm gonna have to retreat into Rayquaza here and go ahead and Turbo Storm. Knocking out Coco and taking two, pro two energies and throwing them on. Might be Meowth. I guess Lele. Coco? Coco for Coco, guys. Knocking out a Coco to get another Coco. So I guess two prize cards are left. You need to take out that Lele. So he needs, a he needs the Guzma Lele to win. Um, my Meowth can take out Lele next turn uh, with the Turmoil Strike, but I'm still two, two prizes short from those two Galissapods that uh, my opponent was able to uh, save. Well, this makes it questionable then. I kind of need to take out the Galissapod in front of me. How do I do that? I think the best option is to get those energies on Lele to be equal to more. But there's is there a way to do that? No, there's not. There's no way to make them worth more. So I can Ultra Ball away a Heavy Ball on a Lele to see what I have in this deck. Necrozma Venusaur. The 
This is where one field blower hurts you. I need that card. I want an ultra ball for that card. Where's the computer search when you need one? I guess I'll grab the rainbow necrozma. Uh, but this is lost. Give the opponent a well played. Uh, if it wasn't for that, uh, no, I would have done an extra uh, 40 damage there. Yeah, that 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 misplay was the the Skyla for the Orangaroo. Uh, it was a waste. Bye bye, meow. All I could do was 100 damage, though. Wow. So it was a close match. If you look at the stats, though, that match should definitely should have gone in my favor. This is the power of Ace Roller right here. Is it's it's the the extreme counter to. Uh, oh, we damage did the same amount of damage. And I mean, I had another Lele right there. New cards attached. 11. So. Pretty close match, I would say. It didn't turn out that way in the stats, I guess, but... You know Lele was about to go down, so I would have had two more prize cards. Pretty close match. Good job, Galissapod. Uh, I know, I wish I wish Damage Shield would tell you... Uh, what Ace Arola would do, did by just removing all that damage. So there you go. Okay, so let's open up a few packs here to see what else uh, since we have a few packs I know I don't want this to be too too close to 40 but uh, I guess it's going to be 40 minutes here but we have 11 Shining Legends packs that we're going to open up today um, I should probably only open 5 to be honest but I want to see what other Shining Legends stuff we can get we don't have a lot right now we have like 2 Raichus and a rare is Marshadow so we can use that in a deck now Let's see what else we get. Pikachu, Croconaw, and a Manaphy. I know, no one's excited for the rares anymore. It's so sad. Uh, Torcat, Larvesta, Switch, Pokemon Breeder, and a Polkia. Uh oh, 3N and no Ultra Rare. That's not so good. I want an Ultra Rare. Any of them, please. Mew! I like it. Mew! I needed another one of those. I've been using the, the, the copycat of Mew in place of it. Shining Jirachi. There it go. Shining and Shining. So I'm going to put Shining opening in this as well. Bulbathor. And an Entei. Of course it's Entei. <laughs> of course it's Entei. Uh, and the rare is, is Shaman Flippity Flap Rally Back. Electric energy. I totally guessed that right. Ultra rare is a shining Genesect. Yes! Now, shining Genesect is known to be good with Venusaur, but we didn't have any, so we didn't play any. So I'm getting shining luck, but I don't know about the, the rare luck. Virizion. I'm getting shining luck, but like not a lot of GXs. So, what? We had 11 packs, and we opened up, we had three shinings. And a GX. What double fairy energy? How does that count? How does that count? DC and our rare is a Latios to finish it off. So that is that. Uh, we got some shining cards to play with now, but we still are short on GXs. Specifically, a specific GX that uh, everyone plays. So. There's that. Tune in uh, tomorrow for uh, a pin box opening. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming out today. This has been Dapper Drabby. I will bid you guys a lot, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.